Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to The Broken Past. Uh, I know I said this before, and I'll say it again, but it's been a while <laughs> since I've made the last video. Uh, I've got a list of things to make. I've got parts that I've bought, broken things that I've bought, but for a number of different reasons, I've not actually sat down and made a video with all of them. So today we're gonna take a step back and make a much simpler video. Today we've got one camera, one overhead light. We're not gonna do introductions, we're not gonna do multicams, we're just gonna focus on what it is that we need to fix. And that thing we need to fix today is an Amazon Kindle. Uh, this is an old Kindle keyboard that I bought, I think around 11 years ago, and as you can see, uh, sorry for the glare, but the battery's dead. Uh, completely toast, it talks about charging it, letting it sit for 30 minutes, uh, and take, unplugging the power, holding the reset switch, or the power switch for 15 seconds. None of that works. This thing is completely toast, probably because I let it sit for years and years without actually reading uh, any books on it. So. This needs to be fixed. The good news is fixing this is really easy to do. All it takes is a battery and a little bit of work to take off the back plate and replace the battery and we should be good to go. So I just wanna point out though that I did buy this. I'm not sure how well this will stay in focus, but <laughs> I bought the replacement battery for this thing over a year ago, September, 2021. That's how long I've been waiting to make this video. Uh, so let's do it. Let's fix this Kindle and let's get it working again so I can read some more books on it. So I've ordered the battery and the battery is nice because it does come with a set of tools. Uh, it gave us way more tools than we actually need. All we need is uh, a single Phillips screwdriver in here to take the battery off once we get inside. And we can probably use the picks or the, the levers in there to take the back cover off. And then we have, of course, our battery. Let's just open this up and take a look at it and see what we've got to work with. So inside we have just a nice replacement battery for the Kindle 3, this is on here. Um, I think Amazon might still sell replacement batteries but it's really expensive. I actually ended up just buying a brand new Kindle or a refurbished Kindle for 60 bucks. And I think the new batteries were probably close to that much, but this is a replacement battery knockoff battery from a different company, but it should still do what we need, uh, need it to do for this Kindle. So let's start by trying to get the back cover off the Kindle. Uh, and something to point out too, in case you're wondering, the Kindle is an e-ink display, which means it uses a charge to write to the display and then the charge can be disconnected and the, and the display still stays uh, on the screen. So this does say empty battery and the battery is dead. Uh, again, e-paper or e-ink, uh, you know, it, it looks like real paper. And so the, the display that's on it is not currently actually being driven uh, with the battery. So let's take a look at getting the back cover off. There's a couple, couple ways of trying to get at it. Again, we're gonna need probably the smallest pry tool. And we may need to take those wedges to get it out. Now, something to keep in mind, if we flip this back over, these are the right buttons here. So when you flip it over, they're now on the left side. There is, I'm not sure how well it'll show up on camera, but there's a ribbon cable that sits right about here, about 10 to 15 millimeters below this bottom page uh, clicker button. That ribbon cable drives the screen, and so we don't want to damage that. Because if we damage that cable, we have to replace the entire screen. So let's see if we can get into here. The hardest part is just going to be getting it started. And once it's started, we should be able to get our fingers in there and kind of pry the rest of it out. But again, watching out for that ribbon cable there. So I'm just going to see where I can get the best Initial bit out, there we go, came out pretty easy. And then the back cover is pretty tough. So we do have a little bit of ability to kind of pry and twist and try to get it out here. And remember not to pry against the page buttons because they you will break them and then you'll need to replace those as well. So 
And last but not least is watching out for the ribbon cable. It is right in there. All right. And there we have it. The back of our Kindle. So at this point, the rest of the job is pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and use the included Phillips. It looks like it'll still work. Use that guy. And take the original battery out. And there are going to be two really small washers in here. We just want to make sure we don't lose those so they don't come out or you know, cause a short in on the board. And out comes our battery. And there's the washers that are sitting there. And here's our battery. And I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this on the video. Probably not the greatest. But if I can show it right here. This is the brand new battery. We can see it's completely square. No swelling to it at all. But the Kindle battery is really puffy. It's super puffy. Like so puffy that like you can you can squeeze it. It it feels super soft. So definitely this battery is long since past its prime. But we can easily just put the new battery in. Put in our screws. You know what? I'm going to get out my other screwdriver. Magnetic screwdriver will make this way easier. All right. One in. And two. And then before we put it back together, let's just see if it works or if I need to charge it. My guess is I probably still need to charge it. No, we do have a light. Oh, the light just went out. All right, so this battery may need to be charged up before we can use it, which is fine. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see how long it takes to turn on. Can we turn it on now? Nope. So let's give it a minute and see if it turns on. And there we go. It's been about 30 minutes since it started charging and we have signs of life again on the Kindle. Let's try to turn it on with the power button. Turn it back off. Unplug the charger. Looks like we're still good. And go ahead and put the back cover back on. Again, making sure it's lined up properly. And once we get the bottom in place, just start clipping all the rest of the clips all the way around. And just like getting it apart might take a little bit of force just to make sure all the clips are seated in there. And there we have it. Make sure we can turn it back on again without it being charged up without it being connected to a charger. And there we go. Yep, of course, it's saying the Kindle battery is low since I literally just charged it for about 30 minutes. But it works and everything is good to go. So yeah, not too bad of an issue at all. Uh, again, getting the back cover off 
it is a little bit hard. Got a little bit of scuffs kind of around the edges a little bit with the prying tool, but saving the Kindle from going into the landfill. And I also have a case, uh, a lighted case that this connects into. So I don't even see the back of the Kindle, so it doesn't bother me at all. So yeah, short and sweet video this time. Like I said, I wanted to go back to the basics and just make a simple repair video and just get something out there. So yeah, if you have one of these, again, super easy to fix. Batteries don't last forever. As we said, the old battery was puffy and completely shot. Absolutely not gonna charge again on this Kindle. I also have a second Kindle with the exact same problem of not turning on. I'm sure it's the exact same issue with the broken battery or with the puffy battery. And a new battery should fix that one as well. So that is all we have for today. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.